Welcome to the Eugene, Oregon Police Department online primer on burglary prevention, part two. To begin with, let's take a look at windows. Sliding windows have most of the same weaknesses as the sliding doors discussed in part one, and most of the same fixes apply. Sash windows, which slide up and down, have other vulnerabilities. Their latches can be overcome if they're attached with small screws or if the wood is weak. In either case, they can fail if the window is pried open. Often, especially with older homes, window frames warp and latches can no longer be fully secured. In those cases, forced entry is even easier. One way to further strengthen sash windows is to install pins or double-headed nails at a slight downward angle at each overlapping corner. Be careful not to drill all the way through to the outside, though. Pins on chains are available too, which may serve you better than nails in the long run because they don't get lost. Casement windows can be reinforced as well. Removing their crank handles makes them hard to open. This can be an option for windows that you don't plan on opening for a long period of time or if a house is unoccupied, but they can still be overcome with enough brute force. Every extra device helps, including the drop pin arrangement illustrated here. Louvered windows are only occasionally seen in this area. Sometimes panes can be easy to remove. In some cases, burglars can then reach through to open a latch. If this is the case with your window, consider epoxying the panes in place. Install blinds or curtains on all windows, including in the garage. If thieves can't see your belongings, they're less tempted to break in. Consider bars or other reinforcement for basement windows, but make sure you can still get out in case of a fire. Now, if burglars are willing to break glass to gain entry, greater security measures will be required. One option is a product called Security Film. This is a professionally installed film that makes it very difficult to get through a pane of glass. The pane will still be ruined, but the burglar will have a hard time gaining entry. Protective layers of plexiglass or steel mesh are additional options worth considering. We've now covered basic access control and surveillance, which leads us to our next topic, territoriality. Territoriality is the ability to communicate who has the right to enter your property. Establishing territoriality can help deter potential burglars or other unwelcome visitors. Signs such as no trespassing or no solicitors reinforce territoriality. Another good reinforcer would be short fencing or landscaping that can clarify where public space ends and private property begins. This clear border definition isn't necessarily the same as access control if it can be easily climbed over or otherwise circumvented. Outbuildings and storage units are often targeted by burglars so don't forget to secure them, too. Basic hasps must be mounted so that the screws are hidden when the hasp is engaged. Otherwise, burglars can remove the screws to gain entry. Nuts and bolts are usually stronger than screws, which can make a difference if the offender tries to pry the hasp off the door. Basic padlocks can be cut and in some cases easily picked. Shielded padlocks, as shown in this picture, provide much better protection because they're very hard to cut. Many burglars enter through wide open garage doors. In other cases, the doors are easily overcome, so don't overlook their vulnerabilities. Older garage door remote control devices are easier to trigger. Thin windows in the door can be broken, allowing burglars to reach through with a tool and disconnect the electronic controls. Cover these windows with curtains or plywood panels. Disconnect the garage door opener when you expect to be gone for long periods. And don't leave your remote control in a car outside the garage where it can be stolen and used to gain entry into your house. Instead of electronic controls, consider using padlocks, either in a hasp on the outside or in the track on the inside. Inserted into the track above a roller, as shown here, the lock will keep the door from opening even from the inside until the padlock is removed. Even if the offender found another way into your garage, which I'll discuss shortly, a padlock in the track could stop them from hauling loot out through the main garage door. 
Now, uh, about that other way in. Burglars have discovered that we are often negligent about securing pedestrian doors that provide entry into the garage from the side or rear. So make sure these doors are as well secured as all the others in your home. If burglars can enter your garage, they can use your own tools to then force entry into an attached house. Instead of conventional overhead doors, some garages use hinged alternative designs. If these are poorly secured, consider adding hasps with shielded padlocks, or you can consider adding a cane bolt, as illustrated here. Don't leave keys hidden anywhere on the property or in your car. If you have to put a spare somewhere, give it to a trusted neighbor for safekeeping, or consider alternatives such as electronic proximity cards, push-button coded entries, remote controls, or similar devices. I want to at least introduce you to the basics regarding surveillance cameras as an additional security option. Security cameras have improved dramatically over the past decade with more options to consider than we can cover. But one of the most important requirements is that the recorded picture when printed out after a crime yields a forensic quality picture of the offender. That means you have to be able to tell who they are from looking at the picture. Alarm systems can also be great investments. There are two basic types, internal systems, which only make noise at your house, and external systems, which also send a message to a monitoring company. Key points about internal systems include the following. They incur little or no ongoing costs beyond installation, and they rely on alerting you and your neighbors while simultaneously scaring off intruders with the noise. Because your neighbors live nearby, they can respond immediately. External systems provide reassurance that if your alarm is triggered, someone should always be paying attention. This is a preferred option if you have no neighbors living nearby to count on to respond. Unlike internal systems, external systems come with monthly monitoring charges. Because of too many false alarms, the City of Eugene now has an alarm verification ordinance. It requires all alarm companies to first have live video or audio feeds, their own staff, or other arranged responders verify that an alarm appears to be good before police will treat it as a priority call. There are also many self-help options. If you're handy with tools, there are many home security systems on the market that you can install yourself. And if that's more than you want to take on, you can also purchase simple, inexpensive, battery-operated, freestanding door and window alarms. Most are designed to be permanently installed with screws, tape, or even suction cups. But some are specifically designed for use when traveling or to alert you if someone attempts to open the door to your home or bedroom. It's especially important to take security measures before going on vacations or long trips of any kind. If burglars can see that you're gone, even if you've just run out to handle an errand, they feel comfortable breaking in. So don't advertise your departures beyond those who need to know. When gone for vacations, consider the following tips. Have a friend pick up your newspapers and mail. Set up timers on lamps or radios. Turn off your telephone ringer so it can't be heard ringing unanswered from the street. Keep answering machine messages vague. We can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message is enough information. As always, securely lock all the windows and doors in your home. Don't hide a key nearby and don't leave porch lights burning for days. Do you notice any risk factors here? The delivery notes on the door, newspapers on the porch, mail in the mailbox, and a burning porch light are pretty strong indicators that nobody's home. Special events can work against you, too, if your plans become predictable. Just loading the car can be enough to alert passing criminals about your imminent departure. Fishing trips, wedding and funeral announcements, or your reputation for going to all the duck games help burglars predict when your house will be empty. Take extra measures for security in such cases. Consider using timers on lights, radios, or TVs. These can make it look like someone's home, helping to deter burglars. You can pick up inexpensive timing devices at most hardware stores. Ideally, 
have someone watch over your home while you're gone. Arrange for a friend to house sit or check on your home and keep it looking occupied in your absence. They can park a car in the driveway, turn lights on and off, or open and close curtains. Make sure you know how to reach each other in an emergency. And if you have an alarm system, make sure your contact knows how to set or reset it. They should also know where you'll be staying and your expected date of return. If you expect to be gone for at least five days, call EPD at least a week ahead of time and request vacation checks at your home, courtesy of our team of senior volunteers. To sign up or for more information, call 541-682-2746. If you return from a trip to find your home has been broken into, don't go in. The criminals may still be inside. Go to a neighbor's house and call the police from there. Another very important security measure is to form a neighborhood watch. To set one up, the first step is to get all your neighbors together. Just coordinate the date with us and we'll provide a prevention specialist to run the meeting and get you organized. We even provide free home safety inspections and free advice on any other type of crime problem. Thanks for taking the time to watch this presentation. Hopefully you've picked up a few useful tips for making your home safer. If we can help further, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 541-682-5137.